Hello planty people! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Darylin and today we are going to be talking about something that I see questions about online all the time and that is what color is strawberry shake variegation really? Now as many of you watching at home may know, I happen to have a couple of strawberry shakes handy that I can use to assist in this demonstration. And I think it'll be a good opportunity to just kind of set straight some misconceptions and just kind of show how the variegation behaves. And hopefully this will be helpful to anyone out there that's looking to add a strawberry shake philodendron to their plant collection. Maybe it'll give you a better idea of what to look for, what not to pay more for, and maybe give you some helpful information about what kind of conditions to keep your plant in to achieve the look that you are going for. Now, I see posts all the time online in the plant community, specifically with regards to people looking for a strawberry shake philodendron that has variegation of a specific color. Anyone who has seen a lot of sales posts for this plant will know that they seemingly come in a lot of different colors and it's not uncommon at all to see a post that is specifically looking for a certain color of strawberry shake variegation. Something like ISO uh, strawberry shake with nice creamy variegation or ISO a bright pink strawberry shake or looking for a strawberry shake but don't want a yellow one, something like that. And similarly, I have actually seen posts before where people are specifically asking how many different colors do strawberry shakes come in? What's the deal with this plant? What's going on with it? So it's really interesting because this is true. You will see pictures of strawberry shakes in a lot of different colors, but I think that Part of the reason that this misconception is kind of floating around out there about the color of the plant is that you see a lot of strawberry shakes online that are very small plants. They're either very juvenile, they're top cuttings that don't have a ton of leaves on them, or they are mid cuttings where you only see one leaf. You're only seeing one leaf, you're really only seeing one color of variegation. Well, Fortunately, I happen to have this lovely lady next to me. Her name is Queen Celine. She is my philodendron strawberry shake and also one of her babies to assist us in this exercise. And the cool thing about this plant is that not only is it absolutely beautiful, but it is quite large and mature and it has been allowed to grow for a while. And so it has a lot of different colors of variegation on it because that's the thing about strawberry shakes is that there seem to be a lot of different colors of strawberry shake variegation, but really what it is, is that the plant's variegation is Polaroid. It comes in and then fades down to different color phases over time. So when you're looking at a plant, you should be able to tell about how old the leaf is and also what kind of light the plant has been kept in based on what the leaf looks like. So I'm going to just briefly kind of take us through the process of how the variegation changes over time on the plants that I have available. We'll start over here with Queen Celine because I have a very, very new leaf that kind of just unfurled recently. And as you can see, the leaf is very dark and the variegation and the green coloring on it are not super different in color. The leaves come in a very like dark, bronzy, strawberry kind of color, depending on how much light it's in. This plant, I would say probably is in medium light. Normally, it is turned around to face the window, but I do have to keep these drapes drawn most of the time because I am on the first floor and I don't want people looking in here as much as, as much as possible. She doesn't get a ton, a ton of light, but she does get a lot of morning sun coming in through these transparent drapes in the morning. And I do have some grow lights around, but they're not for the most part right on top of the plant. So I would say this plant is in medium light. It definitely shows in the variegation. So this new leaf comes in and it's kind of this bronzy color. On the back, it's very pink, very like dark pink. And then here's another one I can show you right here. This is a newer leaf on Queen Celine's baby. And you can see the variegation, but it's not, it's not super bright. It's still got like a pinkish hue to it. Then after a while, these new leaves are gonna start fading down and they're going to turn yellow. I'll probably insert some close-ups of B-roll so you can see it better, but over here on my big mother plant, there is a leaf right here, the next leaf down from the top has turned fully yellow, all the variegation. It's very beautiful, but it is yellow. That is the color that all of the leaves are going to turn after they start to harden off when they're newly emergent. 
Here is another example, maybe better, on Queensland's baby. This leaf is the second newest one on the plant and it is bright yellow. So this plant is kept in my grow tent and there's a grow light in there. It's much, much brighter. So this leaf actually used to be like bright neon yellow. I think I showed this plant in my fall favorites video and the leaf was even brighter back then. And you can actually go back and look at my, I had to cut my giant strawberry shake video. And I think this leaf was still yellow. So yellow is a color that you're going to see on all of your newly emergent leaves and the brighter light it's under the brighter the yellow is going to be now this does not last forever once the plant has had enough time this yellow color does start to fade down and become more of a light pink or cream so on this plant you can see it probably best right here and it actually is coming across a little bit yellow on camera but this spot right here you can see is really starting to fade down and look a lot more cream. And then of course, it's very apparent on this larger plant that the variegation has faded down to cream. You can see it especially on the half moon leaf around the back, but that is eventually what the variegation is going to look like. Now, if you keep the plant in enough sunlight, the plant will start to turn bright, bright pink. Now, this plant is not in super high light, so, I can't tell you exactly when the super bright pink will start to show up. My kind of thought on the matter is that it starts to show up after the plant fades down through cream because some of the lowest leaves on the plant I've started to notice are starting to turn much brighter pink than they used to be. And I think that's because they've been getting more sun through this transparent curtain. So what are the takeaways from this? Firstly, if you're looking to add a strawberry shake to your plant collection, don't pay more because a plant has a certain color variegation. It's all down to what kind of light you keep the plant in, what your conditions are. You can pretty much get your plant to turn whatever color you want, but just keep in mind, it's not going to stay that color forever. The Polaroid variegation does eventually fade down. So if you love the look of a super creamy strawberry shake and you pay more because that's the color of the plant that you're looking for your new leaves are still going to emerge you know this dark bronzy color they're still going to fade down to yellow and then kind of like a bright green color and then eventually yes they will turn like a pinky cream but if you keep your plant in even more light the pink will start to get more intense so Keeping the plant looking how you want it is definitely a matter of experimenting with your light, figuring out a happy medium, and then, you know, if the more mature leaves do eventually start to become a color that you don't like, you're going to have to continuously cut your plant and then I suppose maybe sell the cuttings or you could always take the old leaves off and then just, you know, grow more plants from the older nodes. But I think at the end of the day, maybe the most attractive feature about the plant is it's like most little known. <laughs> and that's that you're going to get a gradient of color across the whole spectrum of variegation from the top of the plant down to the bottom of the plant. So this idea that you should pay more for a strawberry shake that's a certain color or that you don't want one that's a certain color, unfortunately, that's a misconception. If you get a strawberry shake, you're going to see all the colors. It's just a matter of how intense they are, how much light you're giving the plant. I've definitely seen people talking about like, oh, I have a strawberry shake that's really yellow. You have one that's really pink. Let's trade and then we'll have one of each. It's like, no, it's not going to work like that. You're just going to have two strawberry shakes. So when it comes down to it, the plants that are worth paying more for are going to be the ones that have really well balanced variegation. And what I mean by that is a nice amount of variegation on both sides of the leaf. Because the way that variegation works as the plant grows is that wherever the new growth comes out, whatever the variegation looks like on that part of the plant is going to transfer into the new growth. So if you only have it on one side, eventually your plant may put out leaves that are fully reverted. So if you're looking for a strawberry shake, I would definitely pay a little bit more for more balanced variegation across 
the entire leaf. I wouldn't pay more for a plant that looks like it's a specific color. In fact, I've seen a lot of strawberry shakes recently that are this super bright neon pink color. And if you actually look more closely at the leaves, they almost look like they've been like really fried. I've seen a lot of leaves that are bright pink, but are like kind of wilted and then they look really sad and almost look like they've been burnt to a crisp. So just keep that in mind. I hope that this information has been helpful and maybe you have a better idea of what to look for and what to avoid. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a like and maybe even subscribe. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm more than you know. And that's gonna be it for today. Have a good one, bye.